What's up, everybody? You are here with Miranda Evans, your favorite unfiltered motivator, and we are here for episode six of Motivation with Me. So today we're going to talk about healthy relationships. This is a very important topic for our series, Love, Sex, and Relationships, for the month of June. And we're going to discuss healthy relationships. We have um, video footage from my favorite, Yosha Coburny, who is the founder of The Butterfly Project. She gave me a shirt that was too big, so excuse me, but I still love my shirt, though. Thanks, Yosha Cole. And she is CEO and founder of The Butterfly Project. Project. Their mission is to um, uplift and encourage survivors of domestic violence and domestic abuse. So she works with the survivors um, after they have left their abusive relationship and they're trying to rebuild. She gives survivor packs to um, survivors and she gives out toiletries. She gives out all these phenomenal things, encouragement most of all. So Yoshiko is very wonderful. She's a dear friend of mine. She is a part of my sister tribe. She is everything. She is my hype woman. She is hilarious. You're going to love her message. So she's going to talk about from her perspective because she is also a domestic violence survivor. Um, and in honor of Father's Day, um, I would like to give love to my father who was, you know, killed from domestic violence. He was murdered by his girlfriend when I was 11, March 14, 2004. So daddy, I love you and I miss you very much. And I am doing this for you. Hashtag purple for Randy. And we want to make you aware of domestic violence and we want to really talk about it because it's a serious thing for both men and women. Um, teen abuse is also a very big topic that we need to discuss because it stems from that teens also experience abusive relationships and being young that they don't recognize them, they don't recognize the red flags, you know, they don't recognize the controlling or, you know, the you can't do this, you can't wear this, the there's different types of abuse. There's financial abuse, there's verbal abuse, there's emotional abuse, psychological abuse, domestic abuse, sexual abuse. There's so many different aspects to abuse. And if you are experiencing an abusive relationship, then please call the hotline number, reach out for help. Um, and I will put the number in the description below. You know, just reach out try to get to anybody that you can. It's really complicated because when you're in a domestic violence relationship, usually the abuser takes you away from your family and your friends and keeps you in isolation so that they can control you. So it's hard to get out of those relationships and you want to never tell a domestic violence victim to just leave because that can be fatal. Um, that is what my father did. So, you know, and he passed away. He was shot. So 90% of the time that is fatal for a woman to just leave a domestic violence relationship. And not everyone understands why women stay in these relationships. And not everybody understands there's so many different elements to it. You learn or you think that that is love and that is not what love is. That is not what God wanted for you that is not what he expressed love that is not what he talks about love in corinthians in second corinthians and speaking of i want to read a scripture from ephesians 5 28 so husbands are to love their own wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself so we want to talk about love in a way where it should be healthy within your relationship. We want to talk about what an unhealthy relationship looks like and things that you can do or things that people that you can reach out to when you're in an unhealthy relationship. So I want to bring up a video that Yoshiko Bernie did um, not too long ago on healthy relationships and her experience as a domestic violence victim. And Let's give a round of applause for Yosha Kobani, my friend, my sister, and my bae. Well, what's important that you know is one in three women will go through domestic violence. Now, domestic violence is not just physical. It is also mental abuse. It's also spiritual abuse. It's also financial abuse. It's so many facets of abuse. And what I don't want people to get tied into is that domestic violence is strictly physical. So if he's not hitting you, then it doesn't count. 
it definitely counts if your self-esteem is lowered um if you are working and you have to surrender your check if um you are forced to believe scriptures in the bible the torah or the quran and they are applicable to the abuse that's manipulation that is also abuse and so i don't want you to get caught up in physical abuse because it goes beyond that um realistically thinking if somebody walks up to you and hits you just out the blue hits you are you going to allow that no because who in their right mind will physical abuse is a facet of mental abuse because they have to break you down before they can physically abuse you so in your right mind you're not gonna let anybody walk up and just hit you that's just not how the game goes and that's just being realistic but if i can tell you that you're stupid enough if i can tell you that you're ugly enough if i can tell you that nobody cares enough and i continually break you down and get you to a level and get you to a point of where you can believe my words then it'll be so simple for me to put my hands on you and you won't see anything wrong with it. Why? Because I've already told you that you're worthless. So now that you're worthless, then there, it doesn't matter that I'm hitting you. It doesn't matter that I'm lording my power and my control over you. Because at this point, I got you where I want you. And that's where it begins. And so if we can educate our girls and our women that that is how abuse begins, then we can teach them the steps and the tools that they need to not accept that. Okay. That's a red flag. Um, that is something that I need to look for because what I said on the interview a few weeks ago is that you really don't think that you would have to tell somebody, don't let somebody put their hands on you, but it kind of has to be said. It kind of has to be said, don't put your hands on somebody that you love and don't accept that from somebody you love. So, I can remember my mom never told me that. My mom never taught me about love. My mom never taught me about anything like that. And it's not her fault. There's just the the family dynamic that we have in my family. We don't talk about that. Like you kind of just find out on your own and then it's hit or miss in between. And these are real life conversations that you need to have with children and women around you in your life because you do have to say these things because even though you would think, okay, there's common sense that I don't need to tell my child that don't nobody need to put their hands on you. Even though there's common sense, you kind of need to say, you don't need to let nobody put their hands on you. You also don't need to let anyone talk crazy to you or make you feel bad about yourself. And in the community, the black community and black women, of course, our parents try to esteem us and they try to build us up and oh you're beautiful oh you're this and oh you're that because the logic is if i esteem you enough then you won't be looking for any other place and of course that positive reinforcement is true and yes my mama told me i'm beautiful my daddy told me i'm beautiful my aunties and my uncles they told me that i'm beautiful so i don't have to look for the validation anywhere else but it's different when it comes from someone that you're romantically connected with and that you're um, wanting to date and build something with. It's totally different because, of course, we're not looking to build that with our parents. We're not looking to build that with family members. But because this is a romantic situation, yeah, my mama told me my beautiful, I'm beautiful, but if my dude don't think that I'm beautiful, like, what's the point? Yeah, my mama got to say I'm beautiful. My daddy got to tell me these things, but in a romantic aspect, if he don't think that then there's something wrong with me. And then we internalize it. And then we begin to accept things that we should not as women, as men who are battered. And then if we have children in the relationship, then the children will come out. Because then it's like, oh, you stupid like your mama. Or you do stupid things like your daddy or whatever the case may be. And then it perpetuates. Then it's a cycle. And then we get in the cycle. And then it's a generational curse. Because then we find out, oh, we're 30 years into domestic abuse. And no one has ever said anything. And it wasn't people of america got a phone call okay all righty so then we're into generational curses that have been created because we were never told about domestic abuse i can remember as an adult as any family there's family secrets and my family has a gaggle of family secrets and so i remember one of the family secrets that i found out is that two i think one of my uncles was an abuser and then like two or three of my aunts suffered domestic violence why were we not told about this because then it teaches the cycle so now i'm trying to figure out how did i end up in a cycle of abuse when it's in my family and i never knew so these are things that we have to talk about and we have to teach in addition to one in three women there will be one in four men who suffered domestic violence so and my thing with that is 
men catch it the harder the hardest with domestic violence now go with me i know with the movement and the feminism and all that i'm supposed to be pro-woman and i am so i'm not negating women and their abuse but what i'm saying is men get it hard simply because of the masculinity and the masculinity that we set the expectation for men being abused is a real thing and it's not just talking crazy and all of that because that's a part of abuse and we'll get there but men are out here like being sucker punched they being slapped like and all of that and because we have good men in the world they're not doing nothing but accepting it and just being like dog my girl crazy like she pulled a knife out on me like she hit me like she doing this she doing that and it's funny because you like, yo, like not your girl and you laugh, but it ain't funny. Like it's really not funny. And so men are afraid to step out because then it's like, oh, you weak. Oh, you this. Oh, you that. Because you allow your girl to do that to you. When in all actuality, it's not really an allowance. It's kind of like, hey, Malik. Hey, Tiana. I can't see y'all. But it's just like, okay, it's not really an allowance. It's kind of like just what it is. And I don't know how to get out of the cycle. And so any woman who talks crazy to her man, that's also domestic abuse. I am 100% on esteeming your dude and empowering him. And I'm all 100% for, okay, you really just can't like handle him and do all of that. I'm all for that. And I'm also all for correction. Like, okay, babe, like... You know, you're making me mad, you're pissing me off, or whatever the case may be. But I'm not for, like, you stupid, you dog, like, hitting them and all that. Like, why must we do that? Because my thing is, I think we're all human beings that are watching this live. And what I need you to understand is words are powerful. So just use your words. You don't have to hit. You don't have to abuse. You can clearly just say, hey, listen, I'm getting upset, and I'm going to just walk away. Or I'm getting upset. And that's what it is. Like, maybe we should table this issue right here, right now. And then we can come back to it, you know, when we're both a little calmer, a little cooler, whatever the case may be. It's totally okay to come back to an issue. What's not okay is to let your anger get you to a point of wanting to put your hands on someone. Because then that's beyond anger. And it kind of goes into something different so i want us to recognize exactly cousin it's just provoking people and pissing them off and then here we go yeah people now people will push try you and want you to continue but i think it just goes with yourself i remember there was an issue that i had with someone and it was not a romantic relationship but i told her i was like ma'am like you making me mad and it is not going to end well. So let's table this right here, right now. We can talk about it at a later time. Let's just table it right now. And it's okay to kind of wait till things cool off. If anything, I suggest that you do that. Table it until you cool off, till the other person cools off to where you can think. And then come back to it. Because if not, then that's when it goes physical. And a lot of people cannot control their self, themselves. And what I've realized is... Once I heard it from James, James Fortune, it's the absolute truth. Domestic violence is not about, oh, you making me mad or, oh, this is what this is or, oh, this or whatever the case may be. It's strictly about power and control and the lack thereof. 75% of women who leave their abusers are murdered after they leave. So what happens is the abuser's identity is caught up in being an abuser and lording control and power over you. That's just what that is. So when you leave, okay, now you have my identity. Now you have who I am and who I was created to be. Who I was created to be. So I no longer have power. Because you're gone. So I don't have nobody to boss around and talk crazy to no more. I no longer have control. Because now you're doing your own thing. You've decided that I can't hit you no more. So you done walked off. You done left me. You done burned off. You done did whatever the case may be. And so now I'm going crazy. Because that's what my identity is wrapped up in. Is lording power and control over you. So then what do they do? They do by any means necessary to bring the woman back. Even if it's murder. And that's just what it is. A young lady... 
And we've all seen the post. Jess was murdered the other day by her boyfriend. She made a post. Everybody wants a crazy dude and tell he real crazy, pulling out pistols, fighting you, this, that, and the third. And people think it's cute. Oh, well, he crazy. Oh, he grabbed me. Oh, he shakes me. That That's not normal. That's not. If you cannot control your anger, you need to go see somebody. And you need to go see somebody away from the relationship. You need to break up. And you need to go see somebody because no one should have that sort of control over you to where you can't control yourself because then you're not in control of yourself. Like it's a lot. It's a lot happening. I can't really control myself and I don't think we should be together and not saying that ain't the person you're supposed to be with. I personally don't think it is. But people can change and we have to extend that grace and allow people to change. But People can change, and so you have to allow them to do that, but they have to do that away from you because if you are a trigger to them, they cannot grow being attached to you. My abuser went on. He got a good life. He made some more babies. He's living his best life, and I'm happy for him and the woman that he with and the new babies he got. I'm very happy for him, but he could not be who he is now with we with us still being together because he would probably still be hitting me because that's what I allowed and people can only do what you allow so beyond all of that I just want to remind you and let you know that abuse is very real we kind of oh well I'm gonna mind my business oh but you like you know you know and one thing that I do with that is can we just stop telling people you need to leave can we stop doing that here's the thing she knows she need to leave he know he need to leave. This is not rocket scientist. This is not rocket science. This is, these are thoughts that they've had, that they volleyed around in their mind. They know they need to leave. This is not, oh, a no, I never thought to leave. It's not new to them. The thing is, it's not safe to leave. I just told you 75% of women are murdered after they leave. And that's just the reality of it all. But instead of saying, just leave. How about we just say, how can I help you? How can I support you? Are you ready to leave? When you are ready to leave, how can I help you? You know, I personally don't have a place for you to stay if you decide to leave, but I know somewhere where you can go. I'm willing to give you $50. I'm willing to do whatever the case may be to support you. How can I support you? What do you need from me? And if you can't be that guy, it's okay to say to step away because everybody's not that person. If you want them to leave and they won't and it's bothering your soul, just say, listen, I can deal with you in this capacity and beyond this capacity here, I can't do no more. I cannot, I cannot involve myself in that. And it's okay for you to say that because you have to protect yourself because this is a dangerous game. This is a very dangerous game, domestic violence, because it places you in danger. Because what happens is once the abuser finds out that you are attached and trying to tell them to do something, then they come after you. Or then they kind of try to take your friend away from you. So then you no longer can keep them under a watchful eye or be protective of them. Because now he's telling them, no, you ain't finna chill with her. You're not finna. She ain't welcome over here. No, ain't no going over there. She can't call over here. And then you no longer know what's going on. And you no, no, no longer know the status of what they're going through. So keep the lines of communication open at all times. But just... Y'all, we have to be mindful of what we're saying to people. You never know what people are dealing with. Hey, Donnie, you never know what people are dealing with. You never know what survivors are going through. Because let me tell you, it's hard. I remember when I was going through my situation and I looked my homegirls in the face and I was like, I'm ready to go. I, I can't. I need to leave. I can't continue to do this. And they looked at me and was like, but you're not going nowhere. Like, we could get you out of it, but you're not going nowhere. And I mean, they weren't lying. Like if I'm being real, they were not lying because at the end of the day, I loved him and he placed me in a position to be brainwashed to where he was the only person that cared about me. So they're absolutely right. I was not going nowhere. But at the same time, make the effort. Okay, if I do this, then what, like, what is your plan of action? Because you can't just up and leave. That's unrealistic. 
you can't up and leave. There has to be a plan in place. There has to be um, people there to care for you because what happens is once you leave and you don't have anything, then you go back, which is why we offer the Butterfly Project offers so many services because realistically, if I am in an abusive relationship, relationships right now today and I decide to up and leave and I don't take anything, I'm going, f I'm going back. My toothbrush over there, my clothes over there, oh, my ID is over there, um, my kids' stuff is over there, like, I got to go back. And then when you get back, it's the honeymoon, it's the baby, I'm sorry, um, I didn't mean to hurt you, I didn't mean to do this, like, it's gonna be different, I promise, I was just frustrated with work, da 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 this, that, and third, okay, cool. He said he's not gonna do it again, and I believe him, and that's my man, and you're not gonna make me leave him. So then we're in this cycle of, in the honeymoon stage, where it can last from one day to two to three years and you're going on like yeah he ain't never like i told y'all he could change in this two years in like he never did it and then something triggers in his mind and boom we're back in the same spot of him abusing you again just when you thought it was all over so that's why we offer the survivor packs and the counseling and all of this because it's so easy to get caught back in that lifestyle of abuse. Abuse is normal. And I tell people that all the time. You get upset with survivors, but abuse is normal to them. Just as getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth is normal to you, abuse is normal to a survivor. It's absolutely coping skills, cousin. And it's absolutely retaliation and isolation. That's what they do. Because here's the thing. You get up in the morning without thinking. You go brush your teeth. You don't need no prompting. You don't need, oh, let me go brush my teeth. You don't need none of that. Some of us. You don't need any of that. And that's what happens in abuse. I can remember myself personally. I would factor in abuse in my day. I'd be like, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to come back. He either going to be pissed because his baby mama tripping or whatever the case may be. And it's going to be me. We're going to fight. It's going to be what it is. And then when we get done, I'm going to cook. We're going to have sex. And I'm going to bed. And that's what it is. Because it is normal. It is the normal to survivors. So how do you take them out of what is normal and try to put them in a real healthy normal and expect them to thrive? It just don't work like that. So when you're telling people you need to just leave or you're just trying to go in and pull people out, please have a plan. Please have a plan because if not, all those efforts would be futile. And though you mean well, it's just kind of what happens. It's futile. It doesn't, it's not beneficial because they're going to go right back. So that's all I got for y'all today. So let's give a round of applause for Yoshiko's message. That was phenomenal. Oh my gosh. She explained it perfectly and remember this is coming from someone who was actually in a domestic violence relationship so she is speaking from first-hand knowledge I personally have not experienced a domestic violence relationship but I am you know from a, I speak from a child's perspective because children are affected by domestic violence relationships it tends to become a cycle if a children or if a child witnesses domestic violence between their parents then they grow up to think that that's okay and that's what love looks like and that's not what love's look like. love looks like so we have to break the cycle and when you're a child and you have to grow up without a father because someone decided to take their life claiming that it was love then it affects the child long term because now you have ruined or not ruined but you've changed my life because you took my father away from me so now i have to grow up looking for love in men or looking for love in other places because i don't have that fatherly love i don't have that example of what it looks like for a father to love their daughter and to show them the right things to do and the right things to look for in men so just a few statistics one in three women experience some sort of domestic violence and one in four men experience domestic violence men experience it as well so i speak from a child's perspective and from a male perspective because 
we have to understand that men experience domestic violence as well. It's not just women. And most of the time, men are ashamed to tell somebody because they're like, oh, I'm a man and I'm not supposed to be going through this. I'm supposed to be the stronger one and I'm not supposed to be abused by a woman. But it happens and we have to recognize that and we have to do something about it. Um, also, women between 18 and 34 or that's the biggest age range of women who are in domestic violence relationships. It's about 40%. So this age bracket is when you experience domestic violence the most. Um, and like I said, it's a cycle. So it's, it's, it stems from watching it as a child, experiencing teen abuse because again we don't know what the red flags are we don't know what to look for um and also a, a point that she made that i really love is that she said people only allow only do what you allow them to do and she allowed to be treated that she allowed her boyfriend to be to treat her that way so you know, people only allow what you let them. So if you allow someone to be abusive towards you, then they're going to continuously do that. And, you know, we come, a lot of women go back. They go back to the same relationship. One of the reasons is because they, they don't have a support system. They may have lived something. They don't have anything to start over. Um, a, a big excuse is I'm doing it for the kids. There's so many reasons that, you know, domestic violence victims go back multiple times. It's like, and it gets frustrating with family and friends who don't understand because their thing is, well, why do you keep going back to this man? But it's a it's a psychological thing. It starts as psychological abuse. This man or woman has torn this person down and made them believe that they can only survive with them. And nobody else is going to want them. Nobody else is going to deal with them. Nobody else is going to love them. So it's it ruins your self-esteem and it's hard to build back from that. So you have to have a plan when you're leaving a domestic violence relationship. You have to find a support system. You have to find a nonprofit like the Butterfly Project who is willing to help you get past and start over and start a new life. You know, some women have had to move to different states or move to different places and delete their social media because the abuser is reaching out to their friends and family, trying to find them on social media, trying to figure out what they're doing. Like, there's so many aspects and details that go into domestic violence. So we have to be made aware of the red flags, of the statistics, of what we can do to help women and men who are experiencing domestic violence relationships. This is very important, which is why I wanted to speak on healthy relationships. We've talked about love. We've talked about sex. We've talked about celibacy. We've talked about relationships in general, but now we're focusing on healthy relationships because we can't talk about love and relationships without focusing on healthy relationships. So Make sure that you guys, if you have any questions, if you have anyone who is in this situation, please let us know. Um, you can send me a confidential email at info at MirandaEvans.com. You can reach out to Yoshiko Bernie, whose information is in the description. Make sure you guys follow the Butterfly Project on social media. I will also post their social media information in the description below. She, um, This is a nonprofit as well as the Trouble Movement. So we, you know, we can only do this with your help and your support. So please donate to this organization and show your support because Yoshiko has has spent three years um because the butterfly project is three years old now yay she has spent three years devoting her life to rebuilding domestic violence survivors and she spent an even longer time trying to rebuild herself from being in that relationship I have so much respect and love for her and I'm so proud of what she's doing in the community and we're going to keep continuing to push and we're going to keep continuing to help um, victims of domestic violence. We're going to continue to talk about it. Um, we're going to continue to make noise because this is something that we really, really need to talk about. We're going to continue to be DV. We're going to continue the Purple for Randy campaign. And I'm not going to stop. This is not only because I lost my father, but because I've seen 
firsthand domestic violence situations. I've, you know, ha had to help people get out of them. I've had to be consoling towards them. I've had to give resources. I have, uh, there's so many things that I've seen within this era of domestic abuse. And we want to make you aware of that. So please, please, please follow the Butterfly Project on social media and reach out to them. Like I said, if you have anyone, if you or anyone is experiencing this situation, please reach out to us or you can call the hotline. The number is also in the description. Just please, please reach out for help. You know, we are here. You have a support system. You have someone who is willing to help you. You have organizations like the Butterfly Project, the Trouble Movement, the Houston Area Women's Center you have these resources you just have to have a plan and you have to be willing to reach out and ask for help so please keep in mind healthy relationships we want to make sure that any relationship that you're in is a healthy relationship and it's not it's for you it, it's for you and if you have children it's for your children as well because children also suffer from this so tune in that is our session for healthy relationships but tune in next Tuesday June 25th and we're going to wrap up the love sex and relationships um, theme we're going to talk about teen relationships teen abuse I'm going to talk about sex and celibacy again I'm kind of just going to do an overall summary of everything that we've discussed this month if you have any requests that you would like to make um, for the next video please drop them in the comments below or email me reach out to me on social media and thank you again for tuning in to episode 6 of motivation with me.